I like me a good myth-busting video, and I figured I'd take a crack at one. There are quite a few ifs and buts and maybes about SEO and, and link building in general that stem from misconceptions and a lack of perspective. They're floating around like bubbles just waiting to be popped. I'll tell you what they are, how they started, and then I'll set the record straight. So let's burst some baseless bubbles. Link building is going to be extinct. Like the dinosaurs for being unlucky and the dodo for being too delicious, there are some who believe that link building will one day be a thing of the past, if it isn't dead already. The link building is dead notion has been ringing in the halls of SEO for quite some time. And it's always a conversation piece at any conference or a gathering of SEOs. But where does this idea come from? Well, back in the days of yore, link building from local directories and submission sites used to be enough to give the competition a run for the money. But a bazillion penguin updates later, it became harder and harder and riskier and riskier to game the system, which resulted in two camps. You don't need link building. You just need money and better content and UI and UX and bourbon with cocaine. And link building is all that matters. And cocaine should be used in moderation. Libations aside, data shows that link building is more relevant than ever. And besides the elephant in the room about us being all about link building, the data adds credence to the latter link building camp. Link building is more relevant than ever because links result in movement in the SERPs. We see it time and time again. Google, the largest link builder in the universe, keeps changing. And what worked before doesn't work now. It's more challenging, labor intensive, not scalable, and hence not profitable. Link building remains a factor because it is a fair system. Whoever has the most authority on the subject gets more references via backlinks. Many positive correlation charts between link building and ranking suggest that link building is here to stay. And if somebody wants to tell you otherwise, give them some bourbon and change the subject. No follow links don't matter. Do follows follow and no follows don't. How cruel is that? You no follow me, I no follow you. Do follow sounds good, so no follow must be bad. Why waste my time? This idea of no follow links being worthless is the result of people coveting do follows and link juice. No follows started losing street cred and were cast aside as irrelevant. Sure, do follow links contribute to better rankings, but no follows aren't the opposite of that. A diverse profile should have a healthy mix of both. Otherwise, it looks sketchy. Now, Google will never directly tell us what the best ratio is. We have hints, clues, and they all point to the same thing. John Mueller has repeatedly indicated that no follow links are good signals. No follow is the moral support that your backlink profile needs to look all natural. The truth is rarely pure and never simple. Links are forever. Ha, huh. I'm not sure how this one started. How possessive. Sounds like something a hoarder would come up with. Or Gollum. Precious links, precious. <clears throat> Essentially, a backlink is supposed to be on an external website, somebody else's domain. It's not supposed to belong to you. Logic dictates that if something is not mine, I cannot control its destiny. I can hope that it stays forever. Just like I can hope that jelly beans had the nutritional value of real food. And there are 7.9 million different ways to lose a link. Let's get started. Website shutting down, website revamp, bad mood, deleted blog, too much coffee, not enough coffee, updated plugin by mistake, updated plugin on purpose, revenge, last day at work, content update, a linking page being removed. The global conquest of super intelligent apes. You get the point. Doing link audits regularly, disavowing toxic links, and consistently getting new links will help close the gap of lost links. But it's better to have linked and lost than never to have linked at all. 
you shouldn't get links from websites that have a lower domain authority than you. Possibly the most common misconception, I only want links from DA 60 plus websites. As I previously mentioned in our point about no follow links, the concept remains the same. A natural looking backlink profile contains a mixture of high and low DA or DR websites. In recent Google updates, newer websites with short term games seem to be rewarded even if they don't have 50 plus DA links. And this trend sheds some light on the mysterious algo. It supports diversity. A good link is a link that makes sense. Relevant good content and is as charming as a doorknob with eyes. More than one link from the same website is useless. Ha! Huh. Well, there is some truth to that, but let's read between the lines. Having too many links from a single domain won't give you results and it might affect things negatively. But you can have some, but it also depends on the type of website. For example, an informational news website is likely to uh, post a source that's relevant to it because it's relevant. Another argument is in a specific niche where there aren't that many websites. So there's bound to be crossover. So how many websites is okay? Or how often? Convention tells us that repeating it once a year seems to be hunky-dory. Links from non-relevant sites won't help you rank. Relevance is relative, but isn't everything else? Let's dissect this statement. Links from non-relevant websites won't help you rank. What do we mean by non-relevant websites? Are we trying to say that site A and site B aren't related? Sure, industry types differ all the time. For example, linkbuildinghq.com versus konacoffee.com. They're different, different industries, different everything. But are they relevant to each other? Can I link them together somehow? Through context. Link builders need caffeine. Coffee has caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant. Coffee comes in a cup. Cups have eight ounces. Eight is divisible by two. Coffee makes me go number two. Eureka! You were talking about relevance? I rest my case. The link might be from a non-relevant site, but getting a link has relevance. If contextual relevance can be established, the link makes sense, and ranking is inevitable. Earned contextual links from any niche are golden as long as the website is quality. And they're hard to get, and they're unique. The likelihood of the competition having the same kind of link is very low, which makes it more valuable. So take what you can get. Might not be the link you're looking for, but they found you linkable. Well, that's all the bubbles I can pop for today. If you know any more ifs or buts or maybes that need popping, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and check out our other videos. And what works before, <laughs> I got a bug on my face. <laughs> So wide, isn't it? Link building, link building, what, what am I saying? And as we previously, uh, and I pre, ah, balls. Ba-la-bam-ba-shlam.